So, Praxis Center for Contemporary Art uh, has a really simple concept. We show two artists every six months, uh, one upstairs, one downstairs, and we show them uh, for this long period of time because we want to look at the entire practice. Uh, so it's modular exhibitions, publications, live events, yeah. Well, I, we decided to show uh, artists for a longer period of time because we've both been involved in institutions where things go so rapid and you often work with a lot of different artists at the same time and that of course sort of reduces the, I guess, the amount of involvement you can invest in sort of each of the practices per se. Um, so we really wanted to have this time to yeah, investigate the practice, work with the artist. It's so often that you sit on the uh, opening night and you have a glass of wine and you have the big exhibition up, and that's the moment where you discover that there's this wonderful piece from 1995 that disappeared and now have, have resurfaced, but you didn't know, so you can't show it, right? With this half year, you can, with, uh, yeah, over time, be modular, work organically, and, you know, respond to these kinds of things. So, the reason why we chose somebody like Judith Hopf is, of course, because she has this vast practice with also, that goes in all sorts of different directions. And what we did was that we showed, in the first part, we showed a sculpture installation, followed by two weeks of uh, film screenings, where we showed all 20 films that we could find from her last 20 years of production, followed by, again, um, a sculpture installation that uh, took a very different format again, almost like a museum installation and then now we're showing brand new works that's been made especially for praxis so i think we really managed to get through a lot of different facets of how she's working and also we managed to somehow uh, address the different types of production the collaborations um, the, the the sort of craftsmanship or lack thereof the um, yeah, the, the interest in language and philosophy, the political involvement, we try to address it in different formats, in different ways. So, so Judith is a very good example of a person that's quite difficult to work with within a, an ordinary museum setting. But here we really had the chance to actually show how her work in a way contradict each other or complement each other. Um, so, so it's a, it's a, I would say it's a, she's a perfect example of an artist that fits to Praxis format. Yeah, and then I think also to add to that, I think it was really important with you that we actually, um, besides sort of laying out some sort of different chunks of time for the half year, we were really working with her organically over the half year. So we didn't try to sort of master plan everything from the beginning, but we sort of going through works with her decided, okay, by seeing these works, we want to go in this direction. And now we want to take this direction. And that sort of had its own um, sort of circular way of working, which of course responds to the idea of, of the cycles. Um, and if you look at the, the installation here that we have now, that is then, in a way, Judith's response to that kind of process. So what we have here is, is, is objects that are sinking or rising and you don't really know, but certainly things that are sort of in movement. Um, and that also actually, in an interesting way, connects sort of the whole uh, Praxis House, where we've never before, with any artist, connected the downstairs space, where we work with one artist, and the upstairs space, where we work with the other artist. Um, and that was obviously interesting for Judith to sort of respond to that sort of non-connection and try to make that kind of collaboration, which is something she's always hinged on in her own work. So downstairs we're showing Falke Pisano, who uh, is a different generation than you did and works in a very, very different way. She works with these particular structures and she's already working with long-term cycles in a way, projects that somehow cannibalistically use each other uh, to progress. Um, and the way that we choose the artists that we're working with is, is really is a very simple thing. We both have this bucket list of people that we always wanted to work with that didn't really fit in any of the institutions that we worked. Um, and of course what we're looking for when we put people together 
is not in any way that they can collaborate because this is not what we do. It's two completely unassociated investigations. Um, but we are, of course, looking for some sort of diversity so that we don't end up looking at the same types of projects during the six months. And it just so happens here, I would say, that there's been some, some interesting overlaps, not in the sense that they work uh, with similar themes or have similar methods. But for example, somehow I think for us, working with Judith teased out the, the sense of humor that Falke has, that maybe has been less exposed in a way earlier because of this strict philosophical work. But having Judith next to it, somehow we realized that there's a sense of humor that's really unique. And the other way around, I would say Falke's way of actually using one work to create the next also it was quite inspiring the way that we started looking at Judith's work which is really in a lot of different directions but of course there is of course there, there is this element of, of uh, using what you've just made to create something else so in that sense we're not trying to say that they're opposites or that there's a contradiction between what they do we're really just trying to say here's two very different contemporary practices but also connects the two main structures that exist on different levels within the object of the work in such a way that the transformation of the structure of the disintegrating... And then I guess to add to that, what we've also done in this cycle and what we're going to do onwards is that we have, all, besides being Christina and I working with the artists, we've invited two associate curators on board. We picked the curators as we asked the artists to be on board and, and they were so enthusiastic that they wanted to come work with us, um, to sort of be a part of the process around each of the sort of, uh, unfolding of each of the artistic practices. And this has been a really interesting uh, sort of process, of course, of being not only sort of three curatorial voices or three external voices in play, but also have the artistic voice in play. We always talk about passing around the curatorial stick. So in a way, we're all sort of taking a step back, looking at the work, going into the work, going back again. And so in that sense, it's been really, um, yeah, I think it's been in the, the best of senses where we with Praxis really try to have sort of a multi-voiced, multifaceted view on the artistic practices, looking at them in various ways. This has been one of the opportunities as well, inviting external curators.